Hello and welcome back. If you follow the channel, you know that I have been using the Xor book scanners ever since they came out with their original Aura model. This is one of the rare Indiegogo campaigns that delivered what it promised, and then some, and literally saved our butts when we had to scan old IBM documents in a hurry. The scanner has a major trick up its sleeve. It uses a laser line projector to automatically flatten pages, which is a real lifesaver for us. No need to sacrifice a rare book by cutting its binding to feed into a flatbed scanner. In fairness, nothing can beat a museum quality flatbed scanner, but preserving the book is an invaluable alternative for us, and needless to say, this is quick and convenient, takes no space when not in use, and far cheaper. This time I get to try the new ET24, which campaign has just started on Indiegogo. As you can tell from the name, it just got more resolution at 24 megapixels now. More pixels, more better as far as I am concerned. Quite importantly, it now scans at 320 dpi instead of 280, which puts it over the magical 300 dpi limit and makes it an acceptable source for museum scans. This is the side lights. So that's very important when you are reflective materials. Maybe we'll get to test it. Okay, that's the same foot pedal as before. Yeah, slightly different color. The little button, that was a, an improvement they made uh, for the 18 Pro. So you don't, you don't have to click, you have a button that you can smash, it goes a lot faster. There are little things that you use on the side of your box, press on the pages of the book on either side and it removes them automatically from the picture, it, it knows what it is, it has some recognition. I really have to use them with the type of things I scan because my stuff is large enough. And that's the main course, the scanner, which indeed looks like the older one, so I guess the main goodie about it is the increased resolution. So in this round we'll do a richly illustrated IBM pamphlet for warm-up, then move on to a far more challenging item. It's a treasure of a 1970 Fairchild catalogue, 1200 Bible thin pages, written in very small letters. And for dessert we'll do a hand-drawn schematic that wants to curl up. Let's go for it. And same as before, you don't have to have, be a PhD to install the thing. The button goes where the place where it's marked button. They have put a grippy surface on it now, so it, it, it doesn't fly around, it stays put. So that's very good. USB cable goes there. DC cable goes there. That's about all the setup you have to do. And you can plug either the foot pedal, the button, I'll, I'll do the button for the demo and I'll probably switch to the foot pedal when I do the thousand of pages. And I notice there's a new port, HDMI. Okay, that's probably to give... Oh, it makes it a projector. Aha! Uh -huh. You can use it as the... <laughs> it was very vintage -y. You can make it a, an overhead projector. Excellent. I like that. And the software installed is straightforward except for one step. It asks you uh, about a, a serial number and it's the one that's printed at the bottom of the unit. Looking for device, it found it, it's there. So first up, the IBM manual. This should be a simple one. And if you notice, it just finds the outside, adjusts the exposure, uh, you have really nothing to do. Uh, on this one, you notice a little specular, it reflects a little bit, so that's a good one to demonstrate the side lights. So I'm going to turn the side lights on and turn the direct light off. No more direct light, uh, much better. And it comes out much more uniform out here. So that's what I'm going to use for this one. Okay, recognize it, done, ta-da. So if it has a big curve like this, it's not going to be a problem at all. You just keep flipping. Not much to say about this easy manual scan. Just flip and click, it flattens, separates and crops the pages for you. It was done in a matter of minutes. I did upload a high fidelity version on archive.org that clocked in at 175 megabytes, 
but frankly the normal JPEG compression setting that yielded a 49 megabyte document was nearly indistinguishable. So you can get it high pretty good. So that's, that's the pixel level. Uh, yeah, you don't see much difference. So yeah, saving that as normal is plenty fine. It's important to note that the software includes a fairly potent optical character recognition, so you can make your PDF documents searchable. If you saw the previous videos, it pretty much did fine with anything I threw at it. For example, I did not expect it to get this listing page very well. Usually OCR struggles with period listings, but surprisingly, not here, it even got my small listing mostly correct. Alright, next up the Fairchild catalog which has all the good transistors from the 1970s and I was just repairing a machine that was full of Fairchild transistors and I couldn't find them on the web and little did I know I had a catalog it was in there and I never scanned it uh, so after I repaired the thing making guesses on the equivalence of transistors I, I found them so they had some transistors with little domes like this it was full of that stuff, those are the Fairchild transistors, and it turned out I had all the details, I could have it replaced it with the exact uh, correct transistor. If I had scanned the book, I would have known. Oh well, so let's scan the book now. Now that is thousands of pages. Uh, this is going to be interesting. Oh, I hadn't noticed they have added something that I wanted for a long time. The hint stone, they call it, down here. Ah! It tells you if it got it. Fantastic. That's going to be, make my life way easier. I don't have to look at what I'm scanning. Well, this one is turning out to be super challenging because it's written right down the margin here. So I have to use a little yellow thingy and make sure I can see both the stuff in the uh, on the camera because if it's not, if it if it can't see it it's not going to be able to flatten it so i have to make sure that i see everything let's see if i scanned it correctly i got it oh <laughs> didn't remove the nib oh i think it's because i don't have the, the little i don't have enough of it in there i need to include this portion on the page right won't see it all right, let's see. Yeah, it removed it, so it's because I didn't, I didn't go far enough in. Okay, good to know. So you can't be shy with that thing. You really have to show it to the camera. And by the way, this thing is a treasure. They, I have never seen a book with so many details about a transistor. They are curves for every single parameter of the thing. So once I positioned the thumbs correctly, it went fairly smoothly, although it was still slower than usual as I had to carefully spread the book with the thumby thingies. Some stuff down the middle I never got as it was not even visible on the original, but that's a small price to pay for not sacrificing the book by cutting the spine, which I was not willing to do. And voila, last one. And that took me an hour and 20 minutes, including a couple breaks for filming and uh, it's not too bad. I almost got everything but not all the time, but doing it perfect would mean breaking the book. I don't want to do that. So here we go, it's 1102 pages, not bad. So now you want to make a searchable PDF out of it. So you go search PDF, oh, you want to select all the files first and then make a searchable PDF out of it. And here the important thing to do is to not use the auto adjustment but keep the original image. I found it the hard way that if you use the auto adjustment you'll get a smaller file. But 
the uh, original detail image will be replaced with a very low resolution black and white image of it and uh, this is horrible that you just lose all the advantage of uh, having scanned at high resolution so you want to keep the original image and then you hit confirm and off it goes uh, for a little while that is the scan where it's now searchable so you can select the text so the beauty now is that it's searchable and if I had if I if I had uh, scanned it before I would have searched my 25134 that caused me trouble in my previous restoration and found the page where it is and I would immediately have known that it had a typical 8 nanosecond rise time and that the uh, frequency was 400 megahertz uh, minimum which is not at all what I found on the web anyhow so now it's uploaded you can get it next up is a scroll that's a schematic uh, also that's not published that's the one from the tape drive of the HP 1925 that I have been repairing forever actually not from HP it's a company that apparently was hired to reverse engineer it it had a few errors I corrected it uh, but you see the problem that it's a scroll so in order to do these ones I use a piece of transparent plastic this is from a poster frame and then you have to turn your side light on and your top light off so you don't have the reflection I'm going to slide this Better. I can slide down. There we go. One, two, three. Go. Done. Also worth mentioning for you budding YouTubers and streamers, you can use this as a regular camera. Here I was using it as a source in OBS and it could come in handy for filming schematic explanations and such. So like this, there you go, it's uh, just like a regular thing and then you can put the document on it, and voila. So here you go, new Xer ET24 Pro scanner, obviously I really like it, I, I would never have attempted a thousand plus pages book scan without it. You can see the results for yourself, I'll put links in the doodly do and also a link to their Indiegogo campaign where you can get them at a discount for a short while. See you in the next episode. That's the 2N2222, I didn't realize it was so old.